you guys have seen nothing yet. What happened last week is nothing. Like, that's like, I think the prelude for the big deal stuff. Welcome back to Housewives Tonight, Kev. We are so excited to welcome this savvy businesswoman, fast food lover and momager, Lisa Barlow from Salt Lake. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. We are so excited to finally chit chat with you because this season has already been crazy and it's last- so good. So good. <laughs> so I good. Love that. Last episode though was so drama filled. Yeah. So we just so need to break things down. So first things first, you have Jen and Meredith and you're in the middle. You want them to be friends. You want them to have this relationship again. Why was that so important to you? You know, it was important to me that they hurt each other so that they could have peace. So obviously there was hurt felt on both sides. Like Meredith, as a mom, I'm, I'm a mom. I love my kids more than anything. When your kids are upset, it's like, you know, you're only as happy as your happiest child or you're, you know, you're only, my mom always say says that. that. Yeah. You're only as happy as your most unhappy child. And so when your child is feeling something, you're feeling it. And I think for me, I think Jen needed to, um, have a conversation with Meredith so that she could express how she feels, but Meredith needed to talk to Jen and instead, instead of carrying that weight on her shoulder, she needed to tell Jen, this is what you did. This is why I'm mad at you. This is why we can't be friends. This is why we can't have resolve. And then she could go on and just like function. And it doesn't, it doesn't live there anymore. And being a friend means that you are honest with your friends. Like I would, they always say the bad truth is better than a good lie. I actually think I made that up because I tell my kids that all the time, but I'm like, I would rather hear the truth and have it be hard hitting than just keep functioning in this, like sweep it in the, under the rug, uncomfortable tension filled environment when we're all together. The next morning after ice fishing, Meredith called me and literally said, that is the first time I've slept in months. And so for me, that made everything okay for me. I'm like, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad we like stuck it out for three hours on the ice. I literally got my steps in. It was a workout running back and forth. You and Meredith have been friends for such a long time. And we we also like as a viewer fell in love with your friendship uh -huh. last season. Are you guys in a different place this season now that you are closer to John? No, I feel like Meredith and I have a solid friendship and with any friendship, there's lots of layers to it. And you'll see that, you know, you see the interaction at Shabbat dinner where Meredith and I are like having a hard conversation. We can be open with each other and free with what we're saying. You see, I'm saying things that nobody else is probably going to say to her. And she's saying things that no one else is probably going to say to me. And, you know, and for me, even I was like, Hey, you, I let's not bring up, you know, I think people are taking pages from our book from last year and this year and things that happened. But it isn't an issue that Jen and I are friends or Meredith and I are friends. I keep them very separate and they're different types of friendships. Like I'm friends with Meredith's family. I have been friends with Meredith's family for almost like over 10 years. It's not right. just Meredith I'm friends with, it's a family friendship. And I think for me, the big thing is, is like, you know, um, we built that. So there's layers to our friendship. There's depth and dimension to it. And you can have those hard hitting, honest, screaming at each other conversations and wake up and be fine. So you guys are good now, even after filming, because when we talked to her, yeah. she did say things were a little, tensions were high this season between the two of you. Yeah, I think the tension was more from Meredith's, like all the emotions she was carrying with her. I don't think it was anything I was doing. I just think tensions were high because she, had heightened emotions based on everything that was going on. They have a, um, they had a tumultuous, like they were on a roller coaster together, Meredith and Jen, and you know where that roller coaster ended up. Like, I mean, it's right. not hard to figure that out. I'm not doing any spoilers here, but I think for me, um, you know, I didn't feel, I think the things for me that were rough is I'm like, um, I feel hurt too. And I think people forget I'm human and I have feelings and I get hurt too. And right. I think because I'm always standing up for other people and being strong for others and myself that people forget about my feelings and that you can be a strong person. I can love myself and because I love myself means guess what? You don't get to hurt me because I'm going to protect myself. And I think that, um, you'll see as we go on this journey that it's like, I'm like to a point where it's like, okay, this has got to stop. Like if I breathe, I'm accused of stuff. If I'm 
um, protecting someone, I'm a bad person. If I'm not defending hard enough, I'm a bad person, but it's always one-sided. And I think that, you know, hopefully going into season three, it shifts a little bit. <laughs> so it's, it's really tough, but we also got to meet Angie who I really liked. I know you guys didn't have a good <laughs> first episode, but, but you guys have been friends for a while. You have though, been like, friends. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I, I was the one that requested that she come on. So of course I was happy. I was so excited about it. I was so excited to show up for casino night. I like wanted to be in theme. So I found something that I felt was appropriate um, and current for theme. Um, you know, my cute Gucci fit. And um, I was so excited to show up. Like I was listening to Hall and Oates in the car and like so excited to get there. And we share mutual friends. So I was excited to see them too. And it was for an amazing cause um yeah. I'm like very supportive of our LGBTQ community especially because my grandfather was gay so I think for me this was something I was heartfelt for me um I'm with you know this is my way of introducing my friend to the group um and you know like we've been friends for 20 years and I'm excited to be with my friend and it felt like for me I was going and I was like so excited because I'm like oh my gosh I have one of you know in addition to Meredith and Jenny one of my other friends on and this feels good so um, it didn't really pan out that way, but <laughs> those I know. Were, that's what I thought was going to happen. So Lisa, you just got to set the record straight for us then. Did you tell the caterers not to work at this event? No, I did not. I would never do that. I own businesses. I am in the F&B industry. And it's so funny because last year, I mean, this is what it feels like to me. Last year was all about my tequila and the bartenders. This right. year, we're re, we're re, um, it's like a retread storyline. It's like literally, like, come on, like we've got, okay, now it's the caters and season three, be prepared. We're in the F and B industry. We work with all the hotels, restaurants, bars, clubs around town. So if your reservation gets canceled, it's probably my fault. And if your Wagyu beef is overcooked, that's probably my fault. And if your Vita tequila cocktail is perfect, that's definitely my fault. <laughs> I love you got, it. You got storylines for the next five. Yeah, it's, it's, it just felt like it was like, you know, okay, here we go again, you know, and it's, and it's stuff that's hurtful for me because it's my business. It's my character yet again. And I would never do that. You can't do that. It's like actually um, insulting the integrity of the caterers too, that anyone could have influence over them and their business, especially during a pandemic when so many businesses are struggling. That was like really hard to watch and live through. I mean, living through it was awful. Those tears were real. For everyone that thinks those are crocodile tears, I do cry. And especially when my heart is broken, it was hurtful. Yeah, yeah, it was hard to watch. What? It, where do you stand with Angie and Whitney now? Will we see more of this unfold? Well, I think that the good thing that came out of this is it forces Whitney and I to have conversations and you're going to see a little more Whitney and Lisa, I think this year, I think people are going to see um, our personalities and like how we interact more together and where our relationship goes. And I think this might have been a catalyst for me and Whitney to start having conversations and understanding each other. Um, and I think so from that standpoint, I think some good things come from this. It's fun to have, you know, everyone get along. I mean, we love the drama. Don't get us wrong. Don't get <laughs> yes. us wrong. But it's always fun to be like, oh, I love Lisa. I love Whitney. Let them love each other too. So yeah. And I think you'll see like Whitney and I are both light. Like I'm a Sagittarius. I just want to have fun. Me Whitney too. Fun. When you said that, I was like, yes. <laughs> What's your birthday? Uh, December 18th. How about you? Oh, we're four days apart. I'm the 14th. I love it. And my little Henry was born on the 13th. We're like literally a day away. I was like, I was like I, I, I'm so saggy that we're in, I'm in labor on I'm, the 12th. Me too. Me too. I, I'm in labor on the 12th. And I'm like, John, Google what the attributes are December 12th are. And it's like man whore, like everything bad for a boy. I'm like, I'm not having this baby today. I'm waiting. So at 1.35 a.m. on the 13th, Henry Barlow made his debut. But I literally was like, we're not going to have a man whore child. Like, I'm not having this baby today. <laughs> oh, my God. That but is I love so funny. Sag. What's your moon sign? I don't know. Oh, you got to look it up. I have a Capricorn okay. moon sign. I'm like beginning okay. and end. Okay. I'm just a <laughs> Scorpio over here. So I can't Scorpios remember. are not Scorpio, consistent. my husband's a Scorpio. John. John's a Scorpio. What day? Are you November? No, I'm October 25th. 
Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Jack is October 20th. So he's turning 17, and, which is so nuts that I have a 17 year old. How is that possible? It's so that's weird. crazy. He honestly. keeps aging, but I don't. It's crazy. <laughs> and that's how it should be. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. absolutely how it should be. Okay. So some big picture stuff that is surrounding Salt Lake. Where do you stand with Jen Shaw after these legal allegations? And we see this, the FBI literally shut down your trip. Oh, you know, it was intense. So we were getting ready to go on our girls trip. Um, Meredith and Mary reserved to travel the way they wanted the right to do that. And I was like, I will never complain because I want to be able to use alternate modes of transportation going on girls trips too. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So I was like, I'm not saying a word. You guys can all complain. I'm not saying a word. If I need to take a jet somewhere, I'm going to. Um, but what ends up happening is Jen gets a phone call and she's told Sharif has internal bleeding and she needs to leave immediately. So, you know, the first reaction is we're all concerned, like all like, what is like, what is going on? Is Sharif going to be okay? And then is Jen going to be able to go on this trip with us? And then the second thing decision we had to make as a group is Jen's going to the hospital right now. Um, do we wait for her or do we fly her in or, um, or does she need to stay with Sharif? Because I know if it were John, I would not leave. I would, I, you, you wouldn't get me to leave. You couldn't pay me enough to leave. And so Jen leaves. And within five minutes, we have all the, all the groups show up. So Homeland Security, um, FBI, New York PD, there's an NYPD, you know, I love food. So there's like an NYPD pizza by our house. And I love going there. They have the best like pizza ever and little beignets. <laughs> and so I was like, did somebody order NYPD pizza? Cause you know, they have like the whole New York logo and being a New Yorker, I'm like definitely supportive. And so I'm like, is this going to be like, are we getting pizza? Whitney's thinking it's strippers sent by Jen. Which and, cracked us up. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. And then I'm watching Heather and Heather just looks like miserable. Like, I'm like, is, are they here for Heather? Like that was my first reaction is, oh my gosh, they're here for Heather Gay. We're at her place of business. And Heather just looks so uncomfortable. And then the, you know, one of the officers is like, um, we, we need to know where Jen Shaw is and know that she's safe. And so then I immediately, you know, I like facts. I like, don't like fiction. I like dealing in facts. So I start thinking like, why would they be here for Jen? And I know she owned a business in New York and she had had a guy that was like very aggressive with her that ended up going to Rikers, the prison. And so my, immediately, my immediate reaction was, did this guy escape and is Jen's life in danger? That was where my mind went. Um, and so that's where I was. And then being a pragmatic person and a business owner, then I start calling every attorney that we work with and saying, what's on the docket for Jen Shaw? Is there anything legally showing up for Jen on the docket to which all of them, three of them called back and said, no. And then I called someone that we use for a security team when we travel internationally. And he's like, I can't find anything on Jen. Um, I'm looking to see if there's any alerts. And then he called back and said, oh my gosh, you know, and Whitney got the news. Then he called back and he's like, this is serious. There's some serious allegations being made about Jen Shaw. Wow. So, so that's it from my point of view. <laughs> <laughs> which is wild. But then you have stood by her side. Why did you decide to do that? You know, I think all of us has stood by her side. Like you're going to see throughout the season, she's with Heather a lot. She's with, um, which they have a very bizarre dynamic. I don't understand their dynamic. It's very, um, they're like, to me, the earth and the sun, they just can't stay away from each other. They're like magnetic forces <laughs> pulling them together. But, um, you know, Heather stands by her side and Whitney's, you know, Whitney goes on the roller coaster of emotions, like with Jen and she's by her side. You'll see their interactions. It's not just mine. And um, for me, this is how I firmly believe. Like in, in our country, we fought for social justice for the last two years and we fought hard for it. And I believe that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. I'm not a judge, I'm not a jury. And this is up to a court of law, a judge and a jury to decide whether Jen Shaw is guilty or innocent. You know, if there is a guilty verdict, I will 100% side with the victims, but we need to get there before we start saying, who we think is guilty and who we think is innocent. And we have to think about that as a nation. Right. Why is it okay for one person to be, um, to get due process, but another person not to, we all deserve due process and we should fight really hard for that. Absolutely. Yeah. I think 
it's important, of course, the fans and social media, everyone has their own take on this, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, from your point of view as her friend, it's important, you know, that you, you wait to see how, how, if this is true. It's not okay. that Jen and I have a placid relationship either. You're going to see, I am a really direct person and, yeah. you know, Jen and I don't always have a hunky dory. Like I hate that word now, but we don't always have it smooth sailing. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to get to see that there's times where I'm like, you know, you see in the in the preview where I'm not picking up Jen's phone call and it has nothing to do with her legal case, nothing to do with it. So, I mean, you're going to you guys have seen nothing yet. What happened last week is nothing like that's like, I think, the prelude for the big deal stuff. Oh, God. Oh, my yeah. God. I can't. It's getting intense. Nothing. This is why Salt Lake is the best. Yeah. City. Everyone. Aww. Yes, <laughs> I love our city. I am. I think our city is this like eighth star now. It's so good. It's so like, good. You so guys, good. It's you so guys diverse it too. It's yeah, so it's diverse important. too. People yeah. think that it's like um, this. Really, in some ways, it's homogenous because there's a um, you know just like the South, there's core religion um, and a lot of followers of the religion here in Utah. But it is right. also diverse. Like Mary's Church is not the only. Um, black church in Utah. There's a lot of them. You know, there's a group in Utah called Who's Who of Utah that Tanisha um, runs. We just had Vanessa Simmons here speaking about her experience as an entrepreneur with an amazing group of people. Our city is so much more diverse than um, people can fathom. And um, you're going to get to see more of that this season. I'm excited for the world to see like how dynamic Salt Lake City really is. That's exciting for sure. Yeah. Speaking of Mary's cult, before we wrap yes. this up, um, <laughs> wait, sorry, I didn't mean no, to. No, you said cult. church, church, church. You just threw out <laughs> the cult. Wait, Mary's ask. church rumored cult. Sorry. <laughs> do you believe? Because in the teaser, you do call you do call Mary out. So, do you believe it's a cult or is this a church? Like, what are all these rumors, and are they true? Oh, you guys are in for. I mean, you guys, this is like crazy you have to follow the story and it's there's a lot to it and you see me meeting with my friend Cameron he's the reason I know Mary Mary would not um Mary's connected to this friend group through Cameron so he's a big deal in this and I will tell you this Cameron is major Cameron if you go on my Instagram page and you look up I have a post with Cameron and you look up everything that young man has done and I wow. say young man because um he was 32 years old and um, very young. And what he's accomplished in Utah is amazing. And I believe everything Cameron said, I believe that his feelings were valid. I believe that they are real. On the flip side, I don't go to Mary's church. I'm not a part of Mary's church. Um, I've stopped in once. Um, I think the congregation members are very kind people. And you're gonna have to wait and see um, how this all unfolds, but I 100% say that I believe my friend Cameron and that those were his experiences, his feelings, and I 100% believe them. Wow. Interesting. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. I think you're gonna, I think there's a lot that, I mean, you guys, there's so much more. I can't even tell you, like, this is nothing. I know. And we thought this last episode was so drama filled, <laughs> which it was, but you're telling us there's going to be way more. Oh, I just think it's just beginning. <laughs> just beginning. <laughs> just beginning. Well, we can't wait. We're so excited for the rest of the season. We're loving you. You keep just being your direct self. <laughs> Thank keep you. Being your direct self. <laughs> wait, we have to ask before we didn't ask. What? Meredith joked on Watch What Happens Live oh. when oh. It, Andy was like, Did you call the Fed? She's like, Andy, what I say, don't mess with my family. Was she just like <laughs> kidding? Um, well, I don't like when people speak for me, so I'm not going to start speaking for Meredith. Okay. Wow. Lisa, yeah. you're so good. That's <laughs> what a good answer. You're like, yeah, I'm not going to touch that with a 10 foot pole. No, 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 no. <laughs>